preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Good evening and welcome to the Grenada Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Mission Live GND Sunday Evening Program. I am your host, Takia Felix, and I am very delighted that you have chosen to be with us here this evening. I want to encourage you to share the link, like and share the link, so that the men and women, boys and girls out there can also share in on this evening's blessing. This evening, we captured the team, Stay in the Race. Something about this topic gets me excited. Is it just me, or are you excited as well? Type in the chat and let me know how you are feeling. Let's prepare ourselves to receive the message that is going to be delivered here tonight. Let us pray. Dear most kind and heavenly loving Father, kings of kings, lords of lords, Father, your Alpha and your Omega, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you have blessed us with. And we thank you, Lord, for keeping us safely throughout this, this, this weekend. As we look forward throughout this, 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 week, this upcoming week, I pray and I ask, Lord, of your protection, of your guidance. And I pray that tonight's program would, would be to the furtherance of your cause. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is now time for song service session. I ask that you sing along as the Roberts family lead us out in this evening's song service session. Thank you for joining us again for another Sunday evening service. Please join us as we sing to the Lord's name, honor, and glory. Our first song, our first hymn, would be 212. 212. It is almost time for the Lord to come. This almost time for the Lord to come, I hear the people sing. The stars of heaven are growing dim. It must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone, the day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The signs foretold in the sun and moon, they are dancing at sky. 
God proclaimed to all mankind the coming of the Master Joy at night. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone, the day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. It must be time for the waiting church to cast a pride away. With guarded lights and burning lamps to look for the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost on, the day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Go quickly out in the streets and lanes and in the broad highway. And call the men the heart and blood To be ready for the breaking of the day Oh, it must be the breaking of the day Oh, it must be the breaking of the day The night is almost gone, the day is coming on Oh, it must be the breaking of the day 
this bleak world is gone, but warm is thy fold, my shepherd I follow thee. Thy beautiful lamp shine and bright all my way, thy glorious light unto thy perfect day. Shepherd divine, I know thou art mine. Thy great heart was broken for me. Thy grace and thy love, I picture in all. Make peace upon Calvary. A life that was
last and final song, this would be special for the little kids who are listening. We are going to be singing the B I B L E. <laughs> for leading us into this wonderful worship session. I hope you have enjoyed it and you were lifting Jesus' name on high. God wants us to stay in the race. There are so many things and people that try to take us from God's purpose in our lives. Jobs can be a distraction. Family can be a distraction. Your pastimes can be a distraction. Worry can be a distraction. Many things can be a distraction, but we must remain focused. Let us place ourselves in a respectful manner for prayer as we invite Pastor Maxine Noel as, uh, to, inter to do the intercessory prayer for us. Good afternoon, family of God. I ask for your attention as we about to approach the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, this evening we praise you and we thank you for all that you have done for us throughout the day. What an awesome God you are that you can continue to love sinners, continue to love those who continue to be disobedient to you. You are such an amazing God. And so tonight we just want to thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon sinners. But tonight we come to you and we ask that you would please have mercy upon us. Cleanse us, Lord Jesus, and create within us a clean heart and renewed a right spirit within us even now. Lord, we, we dare not go forward without your presence in our lives. And so tonight we are asking for a fresh anointing upon our lives. We pray in a very special way that you grant us our heart desire by filling us with your Holy Spirit so that we can do that which you have created us to do. Tonight we are so blessed to worship you in the beauty of holiness. We are so blessed with this privilege whereby we can listen to your word, your word that has life, your word that can bring transformation and revival. And so even as we sit in our various homes, we pray that we'll be attentive to your word and we would by your grace and by your power, put your word into practice. We dare not just sit on our couch or in our various rooms and don't have the desire to make the necessary change that is needed. And so tonight we pray that as we receive your word, 
your word will stir us into action and we will be obedient to it does set the word. And so tonight we pray that you would bless the hearers of your word. We pray that you would bless even the presenter of the word. And we pray, O oh Lord, that at the end of this service, this Sunday evening, that our lives will be transformed, our lives will be made brand new, you know, to live for you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we want to continue to lift up those who are sick, those who are battered and bruised, those who are suffering. We pray in a very special way that your hand of love and mercy will be stretched out to those various persons. We pray in a very special way that those who are in the valley of decision, we also ask that you would help them to make that decision to cross over to the other side and to give their life totally to you. Lord, we are truly coming on to the end of this world and we are seeing these things are happening and unfolding rapidly and we pray that we as a people would not take life for granted but we would take it seriously. So please, we ask tonight that you would help us to be serious with our spiritual relationship and even as we breed, help us, O oh Lord, to breed every breath for you and not for ourselves and we just want to thank you again for what you would do for us and through us and we pray in a very special way that you would touch every individual in the reach of our voice this evening every individual every home that listen to your word tonight will be transformed and lord at the end of it all we pray that your saving grace will be upon each and every individual within this island of grenada and even within the region and even around the world, men and women will come to know you who is life eternal. So we thank you again for hearing and answering our prayers. And we pray that you will bless us tremendously in Jesus' name. Amen. It is amazing how we can think that we are alone in the Christian journey. Have you ever felt like no one understood what you were going through? Do you ever feel like you are alone? I want to encourage you to stay in the race. Keep running, keep walking, keep praying. The Lord will renew your strength. Every situation we face within life, be it good or bad, there is a text in the Bible to keep us motivated. For Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 3 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. May God bless the reading of his word. At this time we will be blessed with a message in song by Sister Karina Philip. When Daniel faced the lions for worshiping the Lord, it seems there was no hope at all for what would be in store. But when we stand on holy ground, our smallest prayer is heard. Instead of on our circumstance, our eyes are on the Lord. Pray on, for you are who the Lord is looking for. Pray on, for this will tear those mighty strongholds down. Stay on your knees, for this is where the battle is won. Very soon you'll win the victory. Pray on. When Daniel faced the lions for worshiping the Lord, 
mind it seems there was no hope at all for what would be in store but when we stand on holy ground our smallest prayer is heard instead of on our circumstance our eyes are on the lord pray on for you are who the lord is looking for pray on for this will tear those mighty strongholds down stay on your knees for this is where the battle is won very soon you'll win the victory pray on when your question goes unanswered and your prayers may seem in vain they don't seem to make a difference they don't seem to make a change just rest assured god knows your needs and he hears each time you pray your prayers are reaching heaven and the answers on the way pray on for you are who the lord is looking for pray on tear those mighty strongholds down stay on your knees for this is where the battle is won there's no better place for you to be then seeking the Father prayerfully, very soon you'll win that victory. Pray on, pray on. Thank you so much, Sister Karina, for that lovely rendition. God be praised. It is now time for the spoken word. And so I would like for you to sit back, relax, and pay close attention and give Pastor Oliver Scott your undivided attention as he guides us on how we can stay in the race. Pleasant good night to everyone. It's a privilege to be able to share with you this message from the Word of God. I know you'll be tremendously blessed. It's a message of encouragement to you this evening. The message is captioned, Stay in the race. Stay in the race. There might be somebody sitting next to you in your home on the couch. Just turn to that person and say, Stay in the race the race. Let us pray. Father in heaven, captivate the attention of the viewers and listeners to your word and may each be blessed by it. And we pray that we all will stay in the Christian race unto the end so that when Jesus returns, we can enter his kingdom. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Stay in the the race. That's the message for this evening. Christianity is like a race. And uh, sometimes when you are running a race, you become exhausted and tired. And there are some persons because of cramp, because of challenges, because of discouragement or lack of motivation to persevere, sometimes they drop out of the race, be it a long distant race or a short distant race. The persons who drop out the race and they walk off the tracks, walk off the field, walk off the road, walk off the path. Also in our Christian experience, there are times when instead of persevering to the end, there are persons who began the Christian race who because of persons talking about them and discouragement and different circumstances, temptations and trials, they go off track and they drop off the Christian race and no longer continue to run. I want to say to somebody out there who's faced with a challenge in your Christian experience, 
don't give up, but you hold on and you stay in the race because the race is not for the swift, but for those who can endure unto the end. The Bible says, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And if perchance you have already walked off the tracks, I came by to say to you, it's time to get back on track, get to stepping, keep on running, and stay in the race. It is not too late for you to get back in the race. Backslider, get back in the race and keep on running to the end. Because where sin abound, grace does much more abound. And God can and will forgive you, give you a brand new start so that you can keep on persevering in the Christian race. I came by to say to you today, stay in the race. In Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 1, the Bible speaks of the race. Hebrews chapter 12, you can find it. Hebrews chapter 12, we begin at verse 1. And there are two other portions of scripture, if time permits, we will look at. But for now, we are in Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. The Bible says, Therefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I want to pause here today. The Bible says that we also are compassed with a cloud of witnesses. We also, we who are in this day and age, in this 21st century, we also are compassed with a cloud of witnesses. What Paul is alluding to is the stadium back in Bible times where you had persons who would fill the grandstand, if you please, and the athletes will be on the track to run the race. It's kind of like our intercall where there'll be persons in the stadium supporting their team and the athletes will be on the track running the different races. And, uh, and those of us on the, on the grandstand, we are there and we are uh, supporting and uh, we are cheering on our team. You know, as we say, win or lose, we support and win. <laughs> but we are not cheering on folk just to, to lose the race, but we want them to, to win the race. It is that kind of context that Paul is speaking about. And uh, these witnesses that are on the stands, they are supporting us. And these are persons who once run the Christian race, but now they have retired. Not retired in terms of the way we see retirement, but these persons, they have laid down the burdens of this life and Paul is placing them on the stand, saying to us that we just have to consider these past athletes like Paul, or like John the Baptist, like the Apostle John, like Mark and St. Luke. And, and when we consider these athletes, the fact that they were able to run the Christian race and endure unto death, we too can, in, can run the Christian race and be faithful unto death. And if we are faithful unto death, then the crown of eternal life will be ours. And these persons who are there on the stand supporting us around the stadium, these persons were not perfect and sinless. These were sinful human beings who had faults and who committed sins. But they were able to endure to the end nonetheless. You, like they, you are not perfect, you are not sinless, you make mistakes, you fall and falter. But what is important is that you do not give up, but you hold on and keep on running the race on to the end. The Bible teaches that he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. I want to encourage you today to endure to the end. Keep on running the race. Don't give up. Don't let anyone discourage you. But keep on persevering because if sinful Paul could make it, if sinful Samson could make it, if the prostitute could make it, my friend, Rahab could make it, then every one of us can make it by the help and by the grace of God. 
the Bible says, in order to endure to the end and be victorious in the Christian race, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. There are some things we must lay aside because it will prevent us from making it to the kingdom. So fornication, lay it aside. Adultery, lay it aside. Homosexuality and lesbianism, lay it aside. Drunkenness and pride, lay it aside. Revelry and dishonesty, lay it aside. Whatever the sins that you yield to so easily, come to God for strength that he may empower you to lay these sins aside because there's absolutely nothing that is worth keeping you out of the kingdom of God. Whatever the change you need to make in your life, let God set you loose to make those changes so that you can run the Christian race with everything you have. The Bible says, and after we have laid aside the weight that, of sin that so easily beset us, it says, let us run with patience. In other words, with endurance, with perseverance. My friends, the Christian race is not a short distance race. The Christian race does not just call for speed. It calls for stamina. It calls for endurance. It calls for stick to itiveness, if you please. And let us run with perseverance, with patience, with endurance, with stick to itiveness. The race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, that's verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What is, verses, what is first part of the second verse is saying to us is in order to be victorious in the Christian race, it is important that you do not become sidetracked, but that you focus on Jesus. He is the beginner and finish of the race. Jesus started you off when you accepted Christ and you were baptized. But he has not le left you to run the race alone. He is the finish of the race. He will help you to complete that which you have started. So there's no need for you to give up. Jesus is, has started you off the race. He is with you all the way because he promised never to leave you nor forsake you. But he's there at the finish line as well. Cheering you on, saying to you, come on, you can do it, you can make it, don't quit, don't give up, come on, you can do it. And Jesus is cheering you on, and what you need to do is to understand that he started you off, he has not abandoned you, he's with you all the way, and he's with you at the end, cheering you on. But your focus must be on Jesus. Now, oftentimes we put our focus on where it should not be. Sometimes we focus on the preacher. Focus on the pastor. Focus on the brother or the sister. Focus on different things and different ones. And when we focus on others, we become discouraged. Discouraged by their words. Discouraged by their failures. Discouraged by the circumstances of life. But let your focus be on Jesus Christ. Because when you focus on Jesus, you'll achieve your purpose. I want to say it again. When you focus on Jesus, you will achieve your purpose. Let your gaze, let your focus be on Jesus Christ. The Bible says, God says, look unto me and be you saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. There is no one else for you to look to but Jesus Christ. You see, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty together again. The reason why Humpty Dumpty was not put together again because he was looking to the king's horses and looking to the king's men. But if you need to be put together again, you need to look to the king himself. You need to look to Jesus Christ. The song says, look unto Jesus. Sinless is he. Father, impute his life unto me, my life of scarlet, my sin and woe, cover with his life, whiter than snow. Look to Jesus, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory 
and grace. I say hallelujah. Keep your focus on Jesus. If you run in the race and you focus elsewhere, you will be set off track. But when you focus on Jesus, you will be on track. Hallelujah. To the glory of God. The Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus Christ also ran the race. He endured the cross, and he did it for you and for me, so that you can run the race and be triumphant at last. By the time we get to the third verse of our passage, the Bible says, For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Lest you become weary in the race. Lest you become discouraged and faint in the race. The Bible says, consider Jesus Christ. In other words, when you consider what Jesus has done for you, you will not give up. You will not be discouraged. You will not become weary. You will not faint. What Jesus did on the cross for you will encourage you to do something for him. Whatever the sacrifice may be, since Jesus sacrificed for me, I will sacrifice for him. I will endure. I will not quit. I will not give up. But because of the love of Christ, I will keep on keeping on. Because at the end of the day, Jesus is worth it for all he has done for you. Continue on the path of the race. In the book of Philippians, Paul continues speaking about the race. In Philippians, the Bible speaks to us about the Christian race. The fourth chapter, the Bible says here, and we are looking at verses 13 right on. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going to go back to, to the third verse, verses 13 and 14 of the third verse. But the Bible says in the previous verse that we just looked at that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Never feel that you are insufficient to running this race and to making it to heaven at last. Yes, you might be insufficient in your own strength without the help of God. But by the help of God, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He'll strengthen your spiritual arms, your spiritual muscle, your spiritual leg. And he'll keep you keeping on by the help of God. He'll strengthen your cardio so that you have the stamina to endure. Let you be encouraged today to understand that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So in Philippians, the third chapter, the 13th and 14th verses, the Bible says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or to have arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press, hallelujah, to what the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul is speaking to athletes today who are running the Christian race. That's you and that's me. And he's saying to us that he's not perfect. He's not flawless. He doesn't consider himself to have apprehended or to have arrived. None of us could say that we have arrived because we are not perfect. We are sinless. We are not sinless, ra rather. We are sinful. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. If you're going to endure in the Christian race, there's some things you need to forget. If you don't forget them, you'll regret. So you need to forget in order that you don't regret. The Bible tells us, my friends, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. There are some things that are behind. You have some past mistakes. You need to forget. God has forgiven you. Or if you have not asked for forgiveness as yet, he will forgive you. And if he forgives you, he forgives you completely. 
if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So whatever your past sins may have been, it's behind you. Leave them behind you. Forget those things which are behind. Let them talk if they have to talk, but you keep on running the Christian race. Forgetting those things which are behind, you must press to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Not only do you need to forget your past sins, but there are some victories that you have had in your past. If you keep holding on to these past victories, you must understand that your past victories, your past success, these things do not guarantee you that you will endure tomorrow. In other words, yesterday's anointing is not sufficient for today or for tomorrow's temptations and challenges. You need a fresh anointing every day. So every day you must focus on Jesus Christ and not allow your past victories to cause you to become spiritually complacent. No wonder the Bible says, He that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest ye fall. There are many persons in the past who have lived victorious Christian lives, but they set their eyes off track of Jesus Christ, and they are no longer running the Christian race. Don't become a used to be Christian. You must always be a Christian. So don't allow your past victory to cause you to become complacent. Forget those things which are behind and press anew, stretch towards the end for the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul says, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He pressed towards the mark, the finish line, if you please. My friends, the finish line for many is death. If we are faithful to God until death, our place in the kingdom of God is guaranteed. But then there's a price. In Bible times, they had the, the, the wreaths that they were placed on the heads of, of persons, the laurels that they were placed on the heads of persons, that were made from plants like parsley leaves and, and other leaves. But these will soon rot and fade. But we run the race not for a corruptible crown, but we run the Christian race for an incorruptible crown that will not perish. If men and women would train so hard to receive something that will perish, then we as Christians must work even harder, not working for salvation, but giving our best to the master. And by the grace of God, we'll inherit God's eternal crown that will not perish. No, we do not work for salvation, but we give God our best. No wonder the song says, give of your best to the master. Give of the strength of your youth. Clad in salvation's full armor, join in the battle for truth. So the Bible says, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. My friends, the Christian race is a high calling. You know, when uh, athletes take place, take part in the secular races, for example, the intercall, uh, there comes a point when they would call the athletes' name, those who have been victorious, those who came first, second, and third. They would call their names so that they would step up to the platform to receive their prize, to receive their medal. I'm looking forward to that day when God will call my name and I will step up on the, the medal stand to receive my, my crown, to receive my, my prize. And my friends, won't that be a wonderful thing? Won't it be a time when we get over yonder, we're going to sing and shout and jump all about when we get over yonder, when, when God calls your name to receive the crown of life. My friends, the endurance is worth it. It will, be, it will be worth it after all. So the Bible says, I press the water mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It's not just a call of man, uh, an announcer who has a nice voice calling your name. No. Is the call of God. God himself makes the call 
And if God makes the call, it's a noble call for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want to point you to one more portion of scripture where Paul is also alluding to the race and is using the race to speak to us as Christians that we are running a spiritual race. And that portion of scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. There are two verses there, verses 24 and 25, that we are going to look at at this point. The, the Bible says, the Bible says, Know ye not that they which run in a race, run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Before I go to the next verse, the Bible is so correct. In the secular race, different persons run the race. But there is only one winner. So Paul says, know you not that they which run in a race, run all, but one receiveth the prize. In other words, back in, in our day and age, we have gold, silver, medal, first, second, third. But back then, there was one winner in the earthly race. Everyone else were considered to be losers. And there was only one winner. However, in the Christian race, it is different. In the earthly race, one received a prize. But in the Christian race, all receives the prize. In other words, everyone that runs the Christian race wins the Christian race. Everyone who runs and endures to the end will win the Christian race. Once you endure to the end, you are a winner. So you don't have to worry about other athletes in the Christian race. You don't have to worry about me, and I don't have to worry about you. What we have to do is to endure to the end. And I win, you win, every one of us win. Because the race is not just for one winner, but everyone who participates Everyone who has given their heart to, heart to Jesus in baptism can win the Christian race if we endure to the end. The Bible says, so run that ye may obtain. Verse 25 says, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate or disciplined in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we, hallelujah, an incorruptible. In the next verse, verse 26, the Bible says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beat to the air. We are not running, and the, the, the chances of us winning is very slim. Because there are other athletes that are better than us. No way, Jose. That might be the case in an earthly race. You run an earthly race, it might be a road race, and you stand a slim chance of, of winning. Because there are so many other persons that may be better than you. But when it comes to the Christian race, we do not run an uncertain race. Once we exercise faith in God and we persevere to the end, we are certain to win. The Bible says, I therefore so run not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beat the air. Verse 27, our last verse, but I keep under my body and bring it on into subjection lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. In other words, Paul is mindful of himself. Yes, he has to do ministry to bless others, but he too is running the Christian race, and he has to be mindful of himself. I want to say to you today, as a Christian, yes, you have to attend the meetings and contribute to the life of the church and do ministry and help others to make it to the kingdom. But you must ensure that while you do your dues in the church and for the Lord, that you take care of your own soul salvation, that you make your calling and election sure, that you work out your sal own salvation with fear and trembling, ensuring that you are with God and God is with you, so that when the race is over, not only would those you have labored for enter the kingdom, but you too, by God's help, will enter the kingdom of God. As we end this message this evening, I want to say to you that you are running a Christian race. 
but you are not competing against others. What God calls you to do is to endure to the end, to look to him, to not be sidetracked by people and circumstances, trials and temptations, but be focused and endure to the end. And once you endure to the end, you will be saved. You will receive the crown of life because the crown of life will be available for every one of us who endure to the, to the end. My message to you is to keep running the race, to stay in the race, and when you stay in the race, the kingdom of glory will be yours. You have heard a message. You want to stay in the race. You want to endure. You don't want to give up. I want to pray that God will give you help and strength. So join me in prayer. And there might be somebody who may have left off the race. You may have walked off the track. God is inviting you to come back to him. Come back to his church and keep on running the race. There is somebody who may never have started the race. God invites you to come and begin the Christian race. He is a beginner of the race, and he's a finisher of the race. He will start you off, he will be with you all the way, and will help you to finish at the end. Let us pray. I want to pray for you. Father, accept our prayer now as we come in the name of Jesus Christ. Those of us who are running the Christian race, help us to stay in the race until the end and save us when Jesus returns. Those who have backslidden and who have stopped running the race, we pray that you re-energize them and we refocus them. May they start back running the race again and endure to the end so that heaven will be theirs. And those who need to begin to run the race by accepting Christ in baptism, help them to make such decisions even now and to begin the Christian race and endure. Give them endurance, Father, to make it to the end. May they understand that you will be with them every step of the way to start the race, to continue the race, and to end the race. And save them also for heaven when Christ returns. Accept our prayer, Father. We make it in the mighty and loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Scott, for that timely message. I hope that you have taken heed to the summon tonight. Before we end here, I would like to remind you to join our intercessors, our prayer intercessors, sorry, tonight at 8 o'clock p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Zoom ID 874-904-9618. Passcode 013803. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and on Thursdays. Upcoming programs on Mission Live on Tuesday, we have Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. and the rebroadcast will be at 8 o'clock p.m. Youth Life Unplugged on Friday at 7 o'clock p.m., Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m., followed by Sabbath afternoon service at 4 p.m. Join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Life Grenada as we continue Sunday night service. Bow your heads with me as we close our eyes in prayer. Dear most kind and heavenly loving Father, we thank you for this, this wonderful message. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to continue, Lord, to run for the God or race and to continue to hold on to you because you have promised us whenever we are heavy laden that we should come before you for the God and that you would give us rest. So we ask, Lord, that you would give us the strength that we need and that we may continue to fight the good fight and hold on so that when you come, we can be saved in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us here tonight. I wish you have a blessed and productive week ahead. God bless you all. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go.